The government of Ghana has assured citizens of working tirelessly to keep the novel coronavirus out of the country. The Minister for the Interior, Ambrose Derry, who spoke on the sidelines of a conference in Accra, said that all measures earlier mapped out by the Minister of Health to Parliament are strictly being followed, especially at the country's borders. He called on Ghanaians and other nationalities coming from China to abide by new immigration checks and protocols as they have been put in place. The, the coronavirus, I'm sure the Minister for Health went to Parliament and rolled out the program that we have to check it. I can assure you that we are going to follow it religiously and we believe that with those measures in place, we hope that we can, just as we did in the case of the, uh, this other one, Ebola, uh, that we would uh, be able to keep it out. What I would say is that we are appealing to all Ghanaians who are coming from China to submit themselves so that we can make sure they go through those. Uh, the same. We have also appealed to the Chinese to make sure they do the same. They are assuring us that they will do to all those who are before they come to Ghana. But even when they come, we want to be assured. And I'm happy that all of you are alive to it. Help us so that we can together protect Ghana. Thank you. Well, as the whole country is on alert, doctors at the Greater Accra Regional Hospital say they are ready to manage any case of the novel coronavirus. The facility has two centers to hold patients in the case of any emergency. The holding and treatment centers are fully equipped with some 35 staff members. There's more in the following report. I'm here at the Great Accra Regional Hospital, one of the health facilities designated by the Ministry of Health to manage possible cases of the novel coronavirus. And I have with me Dr. Emmanuel Sofignon, the medical director at the hospital here, to tell us what exactly is going to happen if anybody comes in here with the virus. We are at the a center that we call the Infectious Disease Center the Infectious Disease Center of the Greater Accra Regional Hospital. So as I have explained earlier, uh, the process starts from the emergency units. If a case is suspected or referred in as a confirmed case, these are the two possibilities that the patient may have just walked in herself or himself, and we will, through our screening process, suspect that it may be possibly a case or confirmed case having been transported through an ambulance system to our doorsteps. When that happens, uh, the necessary communications takes place, and then the patient is conveyed through our own internal ambulance system to this center. Before visiting the centers, Medical Director Dr. Emmanuel Sofigno took the team on a tour of some of the wards where triages have been set up to ensure all patients are properly screened before they are allowed into the facility. You are checked first at that table that is in front to check your temperature and give you, and, and if the temperature is high, we check on the travel history. And then once you are cleared, then you are free to come here. And then the, the staff here is also safe to access you in a more detailed manner. So that is the process. So where do you keep anybody whose temperature is detected to be high? Where do you keep the person? Thank you. So all that we will do is that when we detect you that your temperature is high, then it means your temperature is high and you have a travel history and you have signs and symptoms that is suggestive that probably you may have, you may, you may either be, you, you may have the condition then it means that we will set you aside, give you a seat to, a seat, to sit on. And we make arrangements, we call the, the drivers, and they come in a very protected manner to transport you to the, detect, the holding center. Dr. Sofignon is, however, worried about the insufficient number of doctors and nurses at the hospital if there should be cases of the virus at the facility. He's pleading with government to deploy more nurses and doctors to the facility. We have security men on board, we have orderlies on board we have doctors on board and we have nurses on board but the implication then is that these staffs are staff who work in the main hospital so when we deploy them here there's going to be shortage on that side and that is why we would like to use this medium to also appeal to the government mm -hmm. to uh, send us more of the technical staff especially the nurses and then additional doctors so that 
uh, the preparedness plan can really work. Because much as we are treating this patient that may come, we don't also want to compromise on the work that is done on the main side. Dr. Srofanyo also advised the general public to be worried and ensure they practice good personal hygiene habits. Well, we'll bring you more updates on the latest on the coronavirus as being reported worldwide and measures being taken as and when we have updated our guidelines in country. But away from that, the Ministry of Communication says government has no intention of shutting down the internet in Ghana during the 2020 general elections this December. The Minister of Communications, Esla Usui Kufo, however, says access to social media could be restricted if the abuse of the platforms and the spread of misinformation continues. Speaking on the sidelines of the Freedom Online Conference that was convened right here in the capital, she highlighted the phenomenon of fake news as one of the numerous challenges regulators in the sector seem to be grappling with. Henry Kusibedu has the rest of the story. According to statistics from the National Communications Authority, about 40% of Ghanaians have internet access. But fake news, voice doctrine and invasion of privacy, according to the Ministry of Communication, are becoming problematic. It is not the tool itself which is bad, but the use to which it is put. So if we're not careful, then we will veer towards making it difficult for legitimate users of that same tool because of the abuses to which it's been put. We've seen a lot of fake uh, false stories being published in the media, in the, on social media supposedly um, as, as genuine stories. We've seen uh, signatures of people being put to false documents claiming the, that they are authentic. We have seen even photographs being doctored with uh, people being um, heads, parts of people's bodies being put on others to create the impression that they were somewhere or were something. Sector Minister Esla Ousu Ekufo downplayed suggestions government may want to tinker with internet during election 2020. The minister also debunked fears that it will shut down all social media platforms in the run-up to the 2020 parliamentary and presidential elections. For me, I don't think shutting down the internet is an option. There have been several countries which have been compelled to go down that route. But whether or not countries would even consider that possibility depends on the willingness of all actors to engage in a conversation about more responsible users of these very useful tools. If we don't do that, then governments are compelled to say that, ah, we don't have any other option than to shut it down. But it's like throwing out the baby with the bathwater. You need it for legitimate purposes. People are using it for wrongful purposes. Are you going to say because of that, everybody, Elmobia, it's, everybody should be barred from using it? I don't think so. So for, I think it's a good opportunity for us to begin to have those conversations. We have time before others maliciously use this very useful tool and make it difficult for all of us who want to use it legitimately to conduct our businesses. I pray and hope that we never get to the point where we would even consider shutting down social media generally. But whether we or not we will do that depends on how we all work together to ensure that we can sanitize this space. And I'm confident that um, if we put our minds together, we can pull the best of what is being done elsewhere and fashion a framework that will ensure that the internet stays open those who want to use it legitimately are giving all the space and encouragement to do so. And those who want to use it for antisocial um, activities are dealt with in accordance with our law. But I know that we're going to build at least 2,000 sites, which would, if each site connects 500 uh, people. That can give you an idea that several millions will be connected. And it's imperative that we do that. Around the countryside, everybody is yearning 
to use data or voice. To, we want to facilitate e-education, e-health, e-commerce, digital financial services, all that. Without connectivity, you can't do that. And it is not right that it is only in the big cities, district capitals, that we have that. It is incumbent on government to do that. And thankfully, government has taken upon itself the responsibility of financing the extension of rural connectivity platforms, infrastructure, to the unconnected parts of our country. We want to start this year. We've gone through the procurement process. We are at the, commercial, the financing stage. And so we will be sending the contract agreement to cabinet and then to parliament within the next couple of months. So I'm hopeful that by May or June, we should have started the rollout. A 34-year-old man has been arrested on the orders of the Techiman Secute Court, and this was during a court proceedings on Wednesday, on Wednesday, February 5. Now, the suspected fake lawyer named Idris Yahaya was in court to represent some four accused persons standing trial in a robbery and kidnapping case when he was asked to be arrested. Joy News Anasabit was at the court and came through the following report. Here at the Techiman Secute Court, one gentleman presenting himself as Idrisu Yaya uh, appeared before the courts this morning to defend a case involving some four gentlemen who, according to reports, were involved in some robbery and then kidnapping case. Well, he's here to seek for bail for them, and uh, according to the information we've gathered here, he charged them over 25,000 Ghana cities to do that particular uh, defense for them. The judge, his lordship justice Alexander Graham, per his interactions with the suspected fake lawyer, realized that the said gentleman is not a lawyer as expected. So he interrogated him and through their interactions he realized that the gentleman had no license from the law school. He was subsequently handed over to the police for interrogations. Divisional Police Commander Chief Superintendent Ohene Bwedi Bosman has been sharing with Joy News how he was arrested. Received a call from the circuit court judge in Techima that uh, somebody has come to his court claiming to be a lawyer, but he thinks he has come there to, to, to impersonate. So, looking at his demeanor and the way he presented his case, he saw that the guy is not a lawyer. So he called him in chambers with one lawyer from Pong. They had an interview with him, and they realized that uh, after their findings, they realized that the guy was not what he think he is. So they called the police to come to the court and arrest the guy. So we sent our guy there, they brought him. Uh, he's called uh, Indrisu Yaya. Who is a 34 year old. According to his train teacher at uh, uh, a place called uh, Modaso in the central region, he teaches in GHS. So we are still investigating the case. We ensure that we get to the bottom of the case and the law takes its own course from there. We've been interacting with the said gentleman, Idris Uyaya, and this is what he's been saying in relation to whether he is actually called to the bar or not. I'm a here. What do you do for a living? I'm a lawyer. You're a lawyer? Yes. For which uh, school? My primary chambers. The school, I mean, not the chambers. Which school? Maranatha University College. It's a London school, but has a branch in Ghana here. Okay. How long have you been doing this? In this law profession, how long have you been in, into the profession? It has been about uh, two years now. You said you graduated in 2019. One year. You graduated in September 2019. And we are in February 2020. That is less than f f four months. So why do you say for, for a year or two? 
You said for two years, then you said for one year. Last year. Last year. I started How long have you been practicing as a professional lawyer? That's from 20, from uh, October 2019 till now. And that is le less than six months? Yes. How many cases have you uh, uh, represented as a lawyer? Do you remember since then? I think this should be my third case. Have you been called to the bar? Not yet. Are you aware without being... If you're not being called to the bar, you have no right to defend everything in the course of law. Well, I'm aware. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing now is illegal. Do you agree? If it is so. Some of the lawyers present at the course when the incident happened shared with Joy News how shocked they are at the turn of events. I'm a bit surprised because to get this... Um, to come to court and say that you were a lawyer, appeared before a second court judge, that was a bit surprising. Um, a bit surprised in the sense that um, if I'd been a district court, especially in the, in the Kayomi, that would have been. But for a second court, Chechiman, you know, which is the original capital, for you to have that the courage, I, I was a bit surprised. You pretend that he or she is a lawyer. It's quite amazing. That people like this like, have that courage. See, and the way he presents himself, that he attended a private law school in Ghana here. There is no private law school in the Republic of Ghana. We have only one law school, it belongs to the state. Chief Superintendent Bosman, however, has a word of caution to the general public as well as people in such businesses. Uh, I want to advise the public to be mindful of people of such nature. They come, they put on uh, 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 suits like lawyers, they put on the gown or the, everything that depicts a lawyer just to fake and uh, dupe their, 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 their clients. So we are telling them that if you want to hire a lawyer, go to the chambers. There are a lot of chambers here. You can even go to the courts and somebody will get you a good lawyer. From the Techiman Circuit Court, I am Anna Sabit for Joy News. Oh, we have to end the news. But before we go, the Roads and Highways Minister, Kwesi Amakwata, has disclosed that the Ghana Highway Authority has dispatched a mobile maintenance unit team to the Watu Nasola Highway to urgently fix deplorable manholes and gaping holes on the highway. Joy News in June 2019 reported about the deplorable nature of the road, which has increased traveling time and consistent arm robbery attacks. Christian Makwata revealed that he was amazed to see that a greater portion of the road was repleted with gaping potholes and manholes, and has further directed that this should be treated urgently. Well, we have the latest update from uh, Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafiq Salam. One key challenge faced by the Akufo Adu administration since taking the reins of governance in the country has been the bumpy, deplorable and unmotorable roads in the country. As a result of that, dozens of communities across the country see of protesters line the streets, block roads to show their anger and displeasure on the government demanding that the roads be fixed immediately or they turn their backs against them in the 2020 polls. Well, well, well. If the turn their back on him because we have permanent interests, we do not have permanent friends. Our interest is development and we believe he is there for that. He should show it not say it. We want to see development. We want to see our roads done. This is not the one village, one dump we want. This is one village, one valley. So we beg. He should just come and work on it. If not, he should just, he should just be praying that... <clears throat> the Ministry of Roads and Highways move in immediately to fix some and those unable to be completed pushed to this year. Roads and Highways Minister Kwesi Amakwata stated that President Ekufuadu attached a lot of premium on building the roads infrastructure in the country. Thus, his declaration of the year 2020 
as the year of roads. Being the implementing ministry, he has therefore been directed by President Ekufo Adu to hold a press conference in regions that he visits to speak to the people about roadworks and projects that are ongoing in their region. Flanked by the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Highways Authority and the Upper West Regional Minister, he painted a mental picture of the state of roads in the Upper West Region. If you take Ghana Highway Authority and we want to consider the condition of roads in your region and condition of roads is always categorized into three good, fair, and poor. At least we have 61% under Ghana Highway authorities being good, 38% being fair, and we put poor around 1%. If you take the Department of Feeder Rules, that is where we have critical problem. Less than 1% is considered to be good, 37% considered to be fair, and about 21% considered to be poor. If you take the Department of Urban Roads, well, 30% considered to be good, 7% considered to be fair, and 63% considered to be poor. You got to do something about this road. It's really terrible, especially if you're driving, driving a saloon car. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. You have to slow down. The issue of the bumpy, deplorable, and gaping hole riddle what Tuna Highway did not escape mentioned by the minister. And I was amazed about the number of potholes at greater session of, of, of the road. The Highway Chief Executive has already dispatched our MMU team, that is the uh, road maintenance, uh, mobile maintenance team, to the region. And work is just started. Work has just started on it. I saw it. And I've directed him to maintain the team here until all the portholes are packed on the main stretch of road. How will it look like in July, half year? As part of our strategy, all gravel roads totaling about 5,200 kilometers in this region will be graded and all side dishes cleaned before the onset of rains in June. This is a promise that I am making on behalf of His Excellency the President to the people of this region. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam. Wa. Well, that, that's it. The latest news headlines we have. But we have more news as we look at the newspapers, and definitely. And we have something exciting for you because from 6 p.m. this evening, all you need to do is suggest rescan your television. You just put it on uh, auto tuning and you get to catch us live on the free to wear platform or the DTT platform. So if you have any of those um, TVs, don't worry. Uh, whether it's uh, TLC or Samsung, NASCO, etc., and you're already watching the regular channels, including Adom TV, Joy Prime, it also means that Joy News, your most credible news source has also been added to the great package for you. And you can watch us 24-7 right here on this channel. But we're taking a break. When we come back, we'll tell you more about it.